it's time for our regular program that's focused on health with me, producer Kunzong. And in this edition, we bring you a very special program titled Rainbow Flag Flown for the First Time in Bhutan. We will now take you to our studio for an in-depth discussion on Ida Hot and LGBT issues in the country with our guest, UN Bhutan Resident Coordinator, Christiana Carlson and Pasang Doji. So welcome to our show. On 17th of May 2016, a rainbow flag and icon for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender rights was flown in the country for the first time. The flag, commonly known as LGBT Pride, went up at the UN House in Tempo as the LGBT community observed the International Day against homophobia, transphobia and biphobia. We now bring you the discussion. Ms. Carlson, what does Ida Hart mean? That's a good question. The International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biophobia is an international event that started in 2004 to draw the attention of policymakers, opinion leaders, social movements, the public and the media to violence and discrimination experienced by the LGBTI community internationally. The date of the 17th of May was chosen to commemorate the World Health Organization's decision in 1990 to declassify homosexuality as a mental disorder. And May 17th is now celebrated in more than 130 countries around the world, including here in Bhutan. As we, the whole nation, saw the day being observed as the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia, we would also like to know some of the relevant activities, if any, that has been planned by the UN. For this year's Idahant celebrations in Bhutan, we had a gathering at the UN House in the morning to raise the rainbow flag along with the UN flag. And this was a significant event because it was the first time that we know of that the rainbow flag has been raised at a public event in Bhutan. It was a very emotional moment for all of us who were there, and uh, the celebrations were fantastic. Following that, there was a day-long program with the LGBTI community and their friends and allies, where we discussed issues related to health and other aspects of, of homosexual life in Bhutan. Following that, at the end of the day, we had interviews on BBS, a live panel discussion that was broadcast nationally. So last year we had a very uh, private event and this year was the first year that the celebrations were open to the public. About the flag, were there any permissions necessary and uh, where were they availed from? The UN House is viewed as international territory under the UN Convention on Privileges and Immunities, so we don't need uh, outside permission to do such. But flag-raising events like the one that we held here in Bhutan on Idaho are held at UN buildings around the world, including there was one in Sri Lanka on the same day. Let's, Pasang Doji, if you can briefly introduce yourself to our listeners. I would like to say good evening to all the listeners. My name is uh, Pasang Doji, and I have been working in the hospital as a physiotherapy technician in Samtsi. And I would like to introduce my own identity in depth. So among the LGBT, I am a, a gay. And I would like to say this to the listeners. What does it mean? Because most of the listeners make mistake in what does it mean. Gay is actually a term which means happiness. Gay means a person who is sexually and emotionally attracted towards the same sex, meaning that I am a male, born as a total anatomy male, but I will be attracted towards a male, not to the female. So this is gay, and uh, it um, is my inner identity who I am. Yes, thank you so much. Pasang, what kinds of opinions do you often get to hear from people about your sexual orientation? Thank you so much for this question. I would like to answer this question slightly different way. It depends upon the individuals. 
I am a different individual and other person may face other kinds of difficulties. But in case of mine, I came out in the national television last year on 11th March 2015. And those gay friends might have watched me. Now, I would like to give some of the reactions given by my own gay community in Bhutan, as well as the straight population community of Bhutan. My gay community, in the beginning, they thought it was not right time. Why? Because in Bhutan, people, if they talk about their sexual orientation, it is kind of taboo, because culturally we are shy people. We don't want to tell about ourselves. We don't want to talk about sex in our family, in our society, and then culturally, uh, very different from other world. But later in the year, they thought it's, it's the right time. So people now, the younger generations, are understanding that this is true. Now, in case of general public, general public has lots of negative as well as positive uh, comments. And more of are the positive comments saying that LGBT people, gay people, gay community, they should be supported, but they uh, can support you only if they understand about uh, the community. Because most of them, they are not aware the LGBT community or the gay person like me or my friends do exist in Bhutan. So that was the great silence breaking uh, moment that uh, how the gay people in Bhutan do exist. And then now slowly the people started supporting us. They are very much supportive. So I'm very much happy because uh, people support me everywhere. Even if I walk outside, they come and appreciate, they talk with us. But few things because uh, people don't understand and then they try to say, oh, oh, that gay guy. Some people have the curiosity. Some people have uh, a kind of feeling that, uh, oh, this uh, gay people, this community, kind of different people, why this is that. But what I understood in Bhutan is they have acceptance and tolerance very much because culturally we have a nice environment where people accept and respect another one. Things will slowly change, but uh, I don't say there is no discrimination and also there is no stigma. It is there because people didn't understand about all those things. So slowly, I'm very much positive things will go easy and like they can balance the happiness as we wanted to just to lead a successful life. Uh, sexual orientation is very small part of our life, anybody's life. But the bigger thing is their overall health and then overall happiness, how they carry and then work for the development of self as well as others. Yes. So with all this uh, mixed attitude from the society's side, how do you take this kind of attitude towards the idea of LGBT? This mixed kind of behaviors we have. When I assess why they have this mixed kind of behaviors in Bhutan, I personally feel like Bhutanese people did not understand about it because they were not aware. They didn't see gay people like me before. They are just curious, they were surprised. They heard a lot of stories, like a lot of legends, transgender stories, or some other things they share as a joke in the schools, in any communities, but they didn't see the reality. So in real sense, when they understand, they are very much supportive. Even if you confess yourself, and if the other person understands who you are, then certainly they are going to come and hug you rather than uh, saying bad on you. From your opinion, is it still a problem for the third gender community when it comes to stigma and discrimination in our society? Yes, we still find uh, discrimination and stigma in our society. So I would like to highlight in two ways. So first thing is we have stigma and discrimination in our own community. Yes. Thing is like to understand our own sexuality it takes a longer time because our country doesn't have any kind of exposure. They don't have like hangout places. They don't have friends to share mm. about their opinion. They don't have appropriate uh, counselors or a bright person to share their feelings. And like in our conservative society, even in the parents' label, they cannot share anything. So because of that, they keep 
everything in the four corners of their wall. So if they keep this inside, they are never going to tell. So this feeling they have inside trying to brush out always keep them hunting and then this creates a mental problem and then this might take you to the time where you want to suicide. Even in my case also, I had a lot of problems like I had depression, I have anxiety, I was under medication for like hypertensive medication for four years. So this is self-stigma they have inside. And uh, other is now from the social side as a general public look at us. In case of gay community, what I see is it's quite uh, easy for anybody to hide because uh, they don't have to change their dresses or they don't have to cross-dress it. It's not a problem with the gay person who are very masculine because masculines are not much discriminated, they don't tell. But they have huge mental problem inside. But uh, those feminine guys who have a little bit of feminine touch, so with them lot of discrimination, yes. especially in the schools, because the school is the right place where secondary changes uh, take place in a person's body, like in the age of 12 to 15, in the teenage. So they will be fighting inside their hormonal changes, the body changes, secondary changes. At that time, they will be already having inner problem of uh, such feeling. And then as a societal norm, if he is a guy, he should marry a female. But when he suddenly started liking guy as a guy, so it is a problem to them. And then from the outside, they give lots of names. In Bhutan especially, they use the terms like chakka. And then these schoolboys are bullied. Sometimes their dresses are pulled up, sometimes like verbally bullied. And then sometimes even they use hands to bully these people. So this is first discrimination faced by the community. In case of transgenders, it is more more... Um, difficult for them. It's really difficult because they have to start wearing other dress than what their anatomically assigned uh, sex. If born as a male, they have to wear female dresses. So when this happens, people will say, why these things happen? They don't understand. And then huge discrimination on them. No? And because of discrimination, in Bhutan, so many transgender sisters and transgender brothers, they leave school very early. So when they leave schools, socially and economically, they cannot grow like others. They have to land up in entertainment industry or they have to land up as street vendors. We have a lot of street vendors who are suffering today. So this is really um, kind of like bad situation. So this is still a problem in Bhutan. Plus, with regard to all these stories that are uh, happening with the LGBT community in Bhutan, do you think there is still a long way to go? Yes, there is still a long way to go because uh, we have to come together. All the LGBT IQ brothers and sisters have to still come together, get educated themselves, and then keep on moving together uh, towards the same goal. And then... In future, we will have very good future. Yes. But uh, if we don't get uh, the proper kind of path to go towards our goal, or we, if we miss out our path, it might take longer to reach to the goal. Yes. So it will be easier and faster if we move together, uh, hand in hand, without like uh, separation of like lesbian community, gay community, or transgender community, because our population is very less, and uh, we are a small community in a small country. So if we work together, then end of the journey, we will have our vision, mission fulfilled. Yes, and uh, Miss uh, Carlson, I missed out on uh, one question with regard to the flag. If Miss Carlson could uh, state out the significance of the flag. Because uh, this is happening for the first time in Bhutan, so I think our listeners need to know. The rainbow flag is the symbol of the global equality movement for homosexuals. It is an incredibly potent sign of global unity around these issues. And all of the, all of the issues that Pasang mentioned that are faced by the lesbian, gay and transgender community 
These happen around the world to varying degrees. And uh, this is the symbol under which lesbians, gays, transgender people around the world can unite. And uh, it helps to combat the feeling of many people who are isolated in their own countries that they are alone. When you see the rainbow flag, you realize you're not alone. You're part of a global movement. Yes. Lesla, and uh, is the UN working in collaboration with the Buddhist government or is it working independently la, in terms mm -hmm. of the promotion of the rights of the LGBT community in Bhutan? We work very closely with the government of Bhutan, particularly with the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. on issues um, related to homosexuality, uh, health issues. UNFPA has recently reached out to the monks community to increase knowledge of homosexual issues among the monk body. And within the UN uh, system, we just ran, in, in the lead up to Idahot, a free and equal social media campaign to increase knowledge and support for the community. And it was an amazing experience. We had more than 2,500 views and exposure of the messages that we circulated on social media in the two weeks leading up to Idaho, which is one third of the population of Bhutan. Yes. And the messages that we got back, the feedback we got back from all of this social media exposure were overwhelmingly positive and loving for the community. So I think here in Bhutan, as in many parts of the world, the last five years in particular have seen a much more accepting attitude towards homosexuals by the general population. Uh, so far, what are the major challenges to overcome? Well, there's, there's actually a lot. Um, the gay and bisexual men are about four times more likely uh, to contemplate or attempt suicide in their lifetime than the general population. And among the transgender community, it's ten times more likely. Um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youths are more likely to experience bullying at school, which causes them to drop out. And the lack of education affects their economic opportunities for their entire life. And the World Bank recently did a study which showed that the LGBTI community is more likely to be impoverished than the general population because of discrimination in terms of education, employment, health, and things like access to housing, finance, like bank loans, and social services. Yes, thank you, Ms. Carlson. Pasang Doji, how would you express yourself to the listeners that what you are is natural to you? Thank you so much for this question. This question is very important uh, to me as well as to listeners. Most of the time, often the people mistake that being a gay or LGBT is our choice. It is never our choice, and it is a natural thing in us. Now, in your mind, it might click why it's natural. It's very much natural because, like, when you start your secondary changes, when you are at uh, 12, 13, and 14, naturally, like, if you are a gay, you are going to like same sex people. Like, you are a boy, you are going to like another boy. And uh, this is naturally coming from insight. It's not something habituated or somebody can make it. I can say this because scientifically, some of the people claim the saying that we can converse the sexuality. They have tried a lot and then it has always failed. And it is true. They cannot change somebody's sexuality because uh, it is not choice. It is just natural. It's coming from inside. And uh, there is a questioning period where you question yourself, who you are. Questioning period is there because we don't have proper education or knowledge on this. Because our school, there is nothing taught about the LGBT community, nothing about sexuality, this and that, being our society very much shy. Parents don't talk about this. So we don't certainly understand it and then it will keep on hunting what's that 
But if we are counseled properly, or somebody like a friend, if you get a friend who is attracted in that one, it becomes very much easier to go with. So it's very much natural. It's not a choice. You have to accept who you are. So to accept who you are is most difficult part, most difficult turn in your life. In your journey, there comes a difficult time where you question a lot of yourself and then at the right time, you reach to the right place, you understand it. But if you missed out that time and you still remain questioning, questioning, and then you still don't understand who you are and then you cannot accept to accept yourself also, it needs lots of like external force, external factors, meaning that knowledge is needed and somebody who can counsel you is needed. But in a mind, if you are gay, you are always gay whole of your life. You will be attracted towards the same gender. So you cannot change it. We have touched a little bit on uh, the isolation and the depression that the LGBT community go through on a daily basis. So if Pasang could say about the distress, depression, vulnerability, and isolation among individuals fitting into the LGBT description. Okay, um, we are more vulnerable to health issues as well as the social discrimination. Suppose gay person or men having sex with men, this people, the community, is more vulnerable to health issues. For example, I would like to cite a very uh, simple example to the listener. Most of the gay people, what they think is now, to use uh, protection during the sexual contact, they think that uh, to use the condom or use lubricants, they think when they have same sex, they will not have children or it's not going to get pregnant. So it's a kind of contraceptive. So because of this idea in their mind, they don't uh, prevent themselves. And then because it's a biological need, people still mingle and then like activities keep on taking place. So because of this also, gay community are more vulnerable. And we cannot explain properly to the doctors. Mm. We cannot tell because we get discrimination from the society. So everything goes hand in hand. So we have a great fear in us. Society will discriminate. Like it depends upon the acceptance, tolerance and the society, what kind of society you have. Because of this fear, we are more vulnerable to social discrimination and stigma. These all factors come together and then we cannot tell who we are. Mm -hmm. And when we don't express who we are, there are a lot of problems with the self as well as others. So first thing comes from our own family. If you are a single son of the family, as a family in Bhutan, we have to have an inheritance. We have to have next mm -hmm. generation from us. We have to lead the generation. So in this case, they are forced to marry. And many of my gay friends are forced to marry. Before 20, they marry, and then they get children. And then after getting children, as I said, being gay is very much natural. Their mind will be always attracted uh, sexually and emotionally towards the same gender. So even if they get children also, at the back of your mind, you are who you are. So because of that, you have to live how you like. So in a lot of the cases, my own friends have stories of like um, they have to go to the court, they have to discontinue the marriage. So this way, like family has a lot of problem. And Bhutanese family, of course, if we explain properly, those who have come out in our community, parents are very much supportive, but not always. For the gay guys, we hide and don't tell. But for the transgenders, sometimes they are taken out of the house. So all these factors make us vulnerable, more discriminated. And then if these things happen more, if we don't voice out ourselves slowly and then help the hidden community, it's going to be a difficult time for us. Thank you for sharing all these uh, stories. And uh, now, uh, since uh, we have you here in our studio today, uh, any bitter experiences that you would like to share about what you had to face once you revealed your identity? Uh? Okay, so before it was very bad situation. Of course, I was masculine. People didn't know this is a gay guy in the school also. I only saw feminine guys were discriminated, but I was hidden. But inside me, I was always sick. 
I didn't have whom to share, what to do. And I even went to meditation classes to calm myself. And I went to psychologists to seek help. These things also couldn't work because I couldn't tell who I am still at that time. I was diagnosed as hypertensive at the age of 23 and all, and four years of medication. And later on, what happened is, luckily, I made uh, gay friends of outside Bhutan, and I got exposure, and I knew it's the natural. I came to know these things, and lots of things coming in front of me, lots of questions, so slowly the questions got solved. In 2014, to come out, but it was still a long way because I had to assess what things are going to happen later. So earlier 2015, I got a chance to associate with uh, Laksam, who is uh, currently helping LGBT community through the uh, Global Fund uh, grants. So with their project, I got exposure visit in Nepal, the Blue Diamond Society, which is working for the lesbian, gay, transgender uh, people in Nepal. So because of that, I got very much encouraged when I came back to my own country. I thought, why not share to our community? After this, everything went like a piece of cake, you know. I have just crossed the difficult step to the beautiful milestones of my life. So from the day I came out, it created more and more happiness. It stepped up my happiness. And then now, See, today, at this moment, I'm so much happy that I feel I have everything. I don't need anything, you know. That's what I uh, feel myself. And um, uh, I'm so happy. Likewise, we are also extremely happy for you and your community friends. With this, we will move on to Miss Carlson. What are your thoughts when it comes to the law of our country, which emphasizes on uh, natural sex. In association with the way the world is moving forward with the idea and acceptance uh, of LGBT law. That's an interesting question because many countries around the world still have laws like Bhutan's on the books. and But Bhutan has been very proactive because uh, even in 2012, they, through uh, grant money from the Global Fund, they worked to develop a national framework to guide advocacy on removing legal and policy barriers on access to services for the LGBT community. And it is very exciting that the National Assembly's Committee on Women, Children, and Youth is recommending that these sections be removed from the penal code. I think this is going to if and when that happens, it will be an important moment for the community to feel that they are free to be within society. As long as the laws are on the book, there's always a lingering fear, even though it has never been used. There is always a lingering fear that someday it may be used. So I think there will be an immense sense of relief if and when that law is removed. What do you have to say with regard to the penal code which states about the unnatural sex? I would like to express through my personal point of view and also through the community's point of view. Um, it's not that I don't respect the law of the country. I don't want to offend anybody in case of this because such a great laws we have. And uh, now thing is like uh, laws were just written there because we were not there. Nobody represented the laws. So because of this, laws are not clearly interpreted. What is it? Of course, it says a sodomy law, and uh, it is not appropriately explained who will be punished, who will be penalized. But the uh, thing is, like, it also did not uh, came to the policymakers because there wasn't any cases, uh, such cases. So if the laws are explained properly in future, um, it will be very nice because we also need uh, permission to marry somebody else. For example, like, I'm a gay, I need to marry another man. So mm -hmm. to live together, or after that, if we desire to have children, we have to get a surrogacy or we have to add up. So in that bill also, we have to, something should be added there regarding and marriage law also. But these things will come slowly. At this moment, what I find very much important is to stick on reduction of 
selfish stigma and uh, social stigma that we have. Our co- own community don't understand much air on this. So our own community should be educated, advocated, and if they understand, slowly the general public understand. Everybody needs happiness, so uh, they will think of the inclusive society because we are very small in numbers. Uh, very small in numbers, that's why we are forgotten. But uh, if we voice out, then definitely they are going to respect us and keep it. But uh, it needs a little bit of time to go. Yes, uh, we also very much hope that uh, things change for better in the near future. La. And uh, Ms. Carlson, do you feel the need for a study and uh, sensitization on uh, such matters, even in schools? La? UNESCO is very um, engaged in helping to develop a way to communicate this more sensitively in schools, particularly around the issue of bullying. Um, I think the United Nations sees, and many people around the world see, the issue of homosexual rights as the civil rights movement of our generation. And I think there's a general hope that as a global community, as the population of Bhutan, that we will deal with these issues much more proactively than we have dealt with other issues in the past, such as, uh, for instance, racial discrimination or gender discrimination. The the Secretary General puts it very succinctly. He says, we all have to ask ourselves, do we want to live in a world where love is targeted or where it's celebrated? Do we want to live in a world where people live in fear or in dignity? And these are the fundamental questions that we have to ask ourselves as we look at LGBT rights in Bhutan. Lastly, if you have anything that you would like to add to our discussion now. Well, I think Pasangya said the community is small. And around the world, we find that uh, homosexuality is about one in 10 people. Or if you like, sometimes we say two in 20 because it sounds a little less lonely. So if you look at the population of Bhutan, there's potentially 70,000 gay, lesbian, and transgender individuals in the country. Many may fear to, to come out or to talk about it. And the best thing probably that can be done is exactly what the community is doing right now, increasing awareness and advocacy and being some of the most courageous people that I have ever met in my life and standing up and talking about these issues on national television. I really have a lot of respect for the community in Bhutan, and I wish them the best. And pass on anything you would like to add. Okay, um, thank you so much. And I would like to um, say to the LGBT community of Bhutan, or who identify themselves as lesbian, gay, transgender, and others, I would like to say you are not alone. Um, you are all with us because uh, we are all same. We have um, human heart. We have um, to share the love and then you all are loved equally and you all have to come forward to join us slowly. We don't want to force you, but slowly try to accept who you are. Try to learn who you are and after accepting who you are, and definitely things will change for you. And uh, if you need any kind of help, if you are alone, don't think you are alone. There are lot many friends working for you, lot many supporters looking for you, and uh, everybody will be loved and cared. So you are not alone. Yes, thank you so much for your time. I hope our listeners have had an informational experience with our show today. I would like to thank our guests who have uh, taken off of their busy schedules and helped us understand the core identity and realities faced by and to be faced by the LGBT community in Bhutan. I would now like to sign out hoping that with the start of a new day, we may all start with a new and refined attitude to ensure equality and rights for all. Thank you so much. <laughs>